My lord, before this inquiry begins, I desire to express on behalf of His Majesty our deepest sympathy with all those who have to mourn the loss of relatives or friends amongst the passengers, the officers and the crew of this ill-fated vessel. A thorough inquiry will be made with the object of ascertaining as fully and as precisely as possible the circumstances surrounding this disaster. Every possible source of information and all available evidence will be placed before your Lordship in this inquiry. The question substantially is this. The Californian is said by the document Mr. Gill to have seen the distress rockets fired from a vessel which, according to Mr. Gill, was the Titanic, and to have taken no notice of those distress rockets. Whether it was the Titanic that she saw or not is a matter that can only be determined after we have heard the evidence. You look nervous, Mr. Groves. Lawyers make me nervous. Mm. You're a man wise beyond your years, Mr. Groves. You see what it's like out there? The newspapers and the politicians, they're all looking for answers. Yes, there's a certain hysteria. But we have nothing to fear. So what do we say, sir? We tell the truth, Mr. Gibson. We have nothing to fear from the truth. You were on lifeboat 13 from the Titanic, and you saw a light before the Titanic plunged to the bottom. Whether it was a fishing vessel or a steamer or what she was, I do not know. It might have been a masthead light. It might have been a masthead light. It was the one that we were going to pull for. Before you left with your boat, did you see any other third-class passengers, women or children, waiting to go into the boats? There were no women left there when our boat was lowered into the water. Not as far as I could see. We had our work cut out to get away with a crowd that we had in our own boat. Tell us about the passengers in your boats. Had you third-class passengers in your boat? Second and third. A few second, principally third. And they behaved well? Very well indeed. They're even making the crew men who mind their lifeboats look guilty. They're guilty because they survived. What are they going to do to us? We've already made statements. Why do they believe us? Ernest Gill. Ernest Bleeding Gill, that's why. Three, two, one. Jump and ship and run into the newspapers with his lies. He already got $500. Can you believe him? The question I would have thought is whether the inquiry will believe him. It's the word of a dirty little cold stalker against you, me, and every officer on the ship. He may be a dirty little cold stoker, but he's got us into all this. Oi, we didn't do anything wrong. Just remember that. We stick together. We stand by the captain. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Dunlop. He will be representing us. Actually, I'm retained by the Leyland line, your employer. Surely that amounts to the same thing.
I assume our evidence to the inquiry will be a mere formality. I would have hoped so, too. Uh, but Lord Mersey, the president of the inquiry, has made it clear that he intends to be extremely thorough. As he should be. I should also tell you that Mr. Isaacs, the Attorney General, is representing the Board of Trade. They do not relish taking all of the blame for the insufficient number of lifeboats on the Titanic, nor for certain other deficiencies. And they may try to deflect attention in another direction. Are they going to try and stitch us up? Yeah, no, of course not. This is a properly constituted legal inquiry. The problem that the crew of the California has is that Mr. Ernest Gill's evidence... Ernest Gill saw nothing that night. He's a gold digger, peddling his lies, trying to make money out of them that went down with the Titanic. He's a lying little shit. Well, perhaps. I would advise you not to use those exact words in front of Lord Mersey. Mr... Stone. Herbert Stone, my second officer. And this is Mr. Groves, my third, and our apprentice, Gibson. Mr. Gill's evidence... Allegations. Quite. Ernest Gill's allegations have, as it were, muddied the waters. There was nothing we could have done. I understand that I'm certain your evidence will bear this out. And you have all of our written statements. Yes, uh, I do. But to be frank, gentlemen, the Leyland Line is concerned that there is a move on to put the blame on the California, the crew of the California. The whole thing had nothing to do with us. It was the Titanic's fault from the very start. And we warned them about the icebergs. What did Captain Smith do? He just kept steaming on like some rookie officer. And that wasn't the only warning we gave them. Yes, that's good. That you warned them. I stress that point. Now, you estimate that the Titanic sank in latitude 41 degrees 33, and your stated position is that you were at the time in question at latitude 4205. Some 30 miles away. Indeed. And at that distance, it would not have been possible for you to have sight of the Titanic. Correct. If we had seen the Titanic, we would have gone to her immediate rescue. Obviously. I have no doubt. But there is this problem of the ship you did see. You mean the other ship? The other ship. And that wasn't the Titanic. Now, you're quite certain of that. Absolutely. I know a passenger liner when I see one. It was much too small. There is no way you could have been mistaken. <sighs> anyway, as I've already said, the last reported position of the Titanic was some 30 miles from the California. Good. And of course, your logbook will bear this out. Of course. Excellent. So if it definitely was not the Titanic, we have little to worry about. Uh, you also have the scrap logbook. I'm afraid the scrap logbook has gone missing. Missing? But you can't fill in this logbook without the contemporaneous notes from the scrap logbook. Am I correct? Yes. But it must have been mislaid. Well, that's a pity. I would urge you, gentlemen, to use uh, your best endeavors and redouble your efforts. Try to find it. Well, gentlemen, you all heard Mr. Dunlop. Let's make some inquiries. See if we can't find this damn scrap logbook. I filled in the scrap log book before I went off duty that night, then you took it over. Yes. Have you seen it since? No. Well, where do we start to look for it? I've already tried, and I can't find it anywhere. It's gone.
gone. Gone? Yes. You know what it was like, and all the confusion it must have got thrown away. The one thing that proves exactly where we were that night and it's lost. Yes, it's most unfortunate. But more than that, surely. How so? Well, you have to admit, it looks a bit... A bit what, Mr Groves? Convenient. On the contrary, Mr Groves, I'm sure the captain finds it most inconvenient. Captain Stanley Lord to the stand. Place your right hand on the Bible and repeat after me. I, Stanley Lord, do solemnly swear. Don't worry, son. I, Stanley Lord, do happens more than a match for these stuffed shirts. That the evidence I give in this inquiry will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Are you the captain of the SS Californian? Yes. On Sunday, April 14th, did you have to stop on account of ice? I had to stop and reverse engines at 10.21 p.m. What sort of ice was it? Field ice, right ahead of me. Now, close upon 11 o'clock on Sunday night, you saw a steamer's light. It was approaching me from the eastward on the starboard side. She was heading to the westward. Did you then ask your wireless operator what ships he had? Yes. And he said nothing. Only the Titanic. Did you think that the vessel approaching you was the Titanic? No. I remarked at the time that she was not the Titanic. How could you tell that? It's difficult to mistake those ships by the blaze of light. About what distance, approximately, did you consider she was from you? I suppose she was six or seven miles away. Were there any other officers on deck? Yes. Mr. Groves, the third officer, was on deck until 12. And then at 12, the second officer, Mr. Stone, relieved the third officer. At 10 past 12. And did you tell him anything with regard to this vessel? I told him to watch that steamer that she had stopped. And then I went to my chart room at a quarter past 12. I told Mr. Stone I was going to lie down. A little later, did he whistle down the tube and tell you whether he had seen any signal? He said he had seen a white rocket. From her? From her. Did you see it? No. Is it the fact that this vessel from which the rocket appeared was at the time in the position which probably the Titanic was? No. What is in my brain at the present time is this, that what they saw was the Titanic. That is in my brain, and I want to see whether I'm right or not. Clear it up if you can. Can you tell us whether you saw one or two masthead lights? I only saw one. You only saw one? The third officer, Mr. Grove, said he saw two. Now, that is important. That is very important, because the Titanic would have two. If Mr. Groves did see two lights, it must have been the Titanic, must it not? It does not follow. Do you know of any other vessel it might have been? No, I do not know. Has Mr. Groves ever expressed any opinion to you that it was the Titanic he saw? No, my lord. Never? Never. Did he say to you that she was evidently a passenger steamer? No. And did you say to him the only passenger steamer near us is the Titanic? I might have said that. Do collect your mind. Did you say it? I don't recollect saying it. You do not give answers that please me at present. Do you now suggest that you do not remember whether you said it or not? I don't recollect saying anything at all to him that night, my lord. I have heard so many stories about the Titanic after she went down that I honestly don't remember what I heard that night. Do you know of any other passenger steamer near you except the Titanic? I did not. But you knew the Titanic was not far from you? I had no idea where the Titanic was. Did you know the steamer had fired a number of rockets? I did not. According to you, did she fire only one rocket? Only one rocket. Have you never heard from other officers that she fired a number of rockets? Since. When did you hear that? The next day. Who told you? Mr. Stone. What did he say? He said she had fired several rockets in his watch. My lord, I think it is very desirable that the other witnesses from the Californian should be out of court whilst this witness gives evidence. 
Where are the witnesses from the Californian? Well, gentlemen, I think you'd better leave the court present. My God, they're giving the captain a right willing, aren't they? Mr Stone, where are you going? It's not right. What do lawyers know about the sea? About as much as we know about the law. We should put them in a bloody ice field, see how they like it. Where's Mr Stone gone? Washroom, I think. He was in a right hurry. Must have been holding it in a while. We were dealing with the rockets. Captain Lord, you had never been in ice before? Not in field ice, no. You were treating the ice, so to speak, with great respect and behaved with great caution with regard to it. I was treating it with every respect. Was that the reason, perhaps, why you were not so inquisitive as to the rocket as you might otherwise have been? No, that had nothing to do with it. Do you consider it reasonable? Seeing you had very little experience of ice to go below to the chart room and lie there. Perfectly reasonable. I was looking after my own ship. Captain Lord, you said earlier, I heard of one rocket. I did not see it fired. And you did nothing further? I did nothing further myself. I remained in my chart room. This rocket, it must have been a distress signal, must it not? If it had been a distress signal, my second officer, Mr. Stone, would have informed me. But Mr. Stone did. He sent Gibson, the apprentice, down to report to you. So I understand. But you know perfectly well that he came. I know now. Did you know then? I did not. I was asleep. <laughs> yes, but you were not asleep. At least I suppose not. When you said to Gibson, what is it? I was wakened by the opening of the door, the banging of the door. These are answers that do not do you the least good. Did Mr. Stone send Gibson to report to you at any time? He told me afterwards that he'd done so. And did you not inquire whether they were all white rockets? I do not know. I was asleep. Think. This is a very important matter. It is much better to tell us what happened, Captain. He came to the door, I understand. I have spoken very closely to him since. He said that I opened my eyes and said, what is it? He delivered the message, and then I asked, what time is it? And then I believe he said that I'd asked him if there were any colors in the light. Is he telling the truth? I do not know. I don't doubt it for a moment. Just think. You say you do not doubt it for a moment. Do you see what that means? It means that the boy did go to the chart room to you. He did tell you about the rockets from the ship. You asked him whether they were white rockets and told him to report if anything further occurred. So he said. That is what he said. Have you any reason to doubt it? I was very likely half awake. I have no recollection of Gibson saying anything to me at all that morning. Why did you inquire whether they were white rockets? Well, I suppose this has something to do with whether or not they were company signals. Do just think. Company signals usually have some colours in them. So that if they were white, it would make it quite plain to you that they were distress signals? No, not necessarily. Some companies use white. Really do try to do yourself justice. I am trying to do my best. I must ask you something more. Do you remember Mr. Stone reporting at 20 minutes to three to you that morning through the tube. I do not. Listen to this. This is Mr. Stone's statement. He reported to you at 20 minutes to three through the tube and told you that the steamer had disappeared bearing southwest, halfwest. Do you remember that? I do not remember it. He has told me that since. Have you any reason to doubt it? I do not know anything at all about it. Listen to this. The captain again asked me if I was sure that there were no colors in the lights that had been seen. Do you remember that? I do not. And that he, Mr. Stone, 
assured you that they were white lights. He has told me all of this since, but I have not the slightest recollection of anything happening that way. You have no reason to doubt it. If he's telling the truth, I do not. Taking a long time with the captain. They're just being thorough. Thorough? They're making out like it was our fault. They're trying to make us a scapegoat. Everyone knows it was Captain Smith's fault. The captain of the Titanic is dead. Dead men don't make good scapegoats. Is there any reference in your log to your steamer having seen these rockets? No, sir. Or this mysterious ship that was not the Titanic? No, sir. Is it not usual to record these things in the log? We never realised what these rockets were, my lord. If they'd been distress rockets, then yes, we would have entered them in the log. But the next morning you knew that the Titanic had gone down? Yes. Did you make no record then in your log of the signals you'd seen? No. Why not? We never took them to be distress rockets. Do you mean to say nobody on your ship supposed that they might be distress signals? The second officer, the man in charge of the watch, said most emphatically that they were not distress rockets. Did you question Mr. Stone as to why you had not been called? I did. What was his explanation to you? He said that he had sent Gibson down, and that Gibson had told him I was awake, and that I had said, all right, let me know if anything is wanted. I was surprised that he hadn't called me out, considering rockets had been fired. He said if they had been distress rockets, he would most certainly have called me himself. But he was not a little bit worried about it at all. And it was his view that they were not distress rockets. That was apparently his view. Mr. Stone. Uh, didn't expect to see you. I know they want to keep us apart. They can't stop me going to the washroom. Dunlop was right. It's a witch hunt. They're trying to pin the blame on us. Boss. When they ask about the rockets, I should warn you that I said you only told me about the one white rocket that wasn't a distress signal. But, sir, I told you about the other rockets. I was asleep. But it's in my statement, sir. I know you say you told me, but I was asleep. Well, Gibson went down and told you. He went into the chart room. So he says. I didn't hear him. And Pilot saw he could prevail. Nothing but rather a tumult was made. He took water and washed his hands, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You never struck me as a man steeped in the Bible, sir. Oh, I'm full of surprises, me, sir. I want to know what you were saying about us in there. Washing your hands of us, were you? You're forgetting yourself, Mr. Stone. The captain is supposed to look out for his crew, last man to leave the ship and all that. And what boy's own comic did you read that in? I thought you were a man of the world, Stone, not some dewy-eyed apprentice like Gibson. But, sir, I told you about the rockets. Forget the damned rockets. You were the senior officer on deck. It was your responsibility. My responsibility? You never told me that the ship was in distress. I didn't know Meantime, it. the Titanic sank, Mr. Stone. If I'm to be blamed, I'm dragging you down with me. Why did you stay below decks? Why could you not give any orders? I was asleep. Oh, is that what they call it now? Be careful, Stone. You say you never sup at sea, but did you that night? Did you? 
I'm not going to dignify that with a response. The fact is that if the rockets you saw that night were distress rockets, you should have woken me no matter what. But I told you... If our positions had been reversed, I would have dragged you from the chart room. So, what? I'm to be blamed, is that it? Oh, think, Stone. The point is not that rockets were fired, but whether or not they were distress rockets. If they were not distress rockets, there was no need for you to do anything, and no need for you to inform me. I see, sir. You're a good officer, Stone. Now pull yourself together, man. Yes, sir. On the night of the 14th of April, was it your watch from 12 to 4? Yes. Did Mr. Groves make any communication to you about the steamer when you relieved him? He told me he had called her up on the Morse lamp and got no answer. After a time, did you make any communication to the captain? Yes. How? By means of the speaking tube. What did you communicate to him? I communicated that I had seen white lights in the sky in the direction of this other steamer, which I took to be white rockets. How many more did you see? I saw four more then. In quick succession? At intervals of about three or four minutes. You saw five rockets go up in fairly quick succession. What did you think at the time that they meant? Well, I knew they must be signals of some sort. Of what sort did you think? I did not know at the time. Now try to be frank. I am trying. If you try, you will succeed. What did you think those rockets were going up at three to four minute intervals for? I just took them as white rockets and informed the captain and left him to judge. Do you mean to say that you didn't think for yourself? Did you think that they were distress signals? No. Did that not occur to you? It did not occur to me at the time. When did it occur to you? After I had heard about the Titanic going down. So, throwing your mind back, you thought they were distress signals? No, I thought they possibly might have been distress signals. From the Titanic? Well, not necessarily. They might have been from some other steamer. You see, I did not think that vessel was the Titanic. You communicated these facts to the captain? Yes, through the speaking tube. What was his answer? He asked me, are they company signals? What was your answer? I said, I do not know, but to me they appear to be white rockets. Did the captain tell you that you were to report to him any news and give him any information that you'd got? When I received more information to send Mr. Gibson down to him with it. After Gibson had come, did you see more rockets? Yes. How many? Three. In the direction of this steamer. In quick succession? Well, about the same period as before. Did anything pass between you and Gibson when those rockets went up? He remarked to me once that he did not think they were being sent up for fun, and I quite agreed with him. Did either Gibson suggest to you, or you suggest to Gibson, that that ship over there is in trouble and might require assistance? I made no remark about that at all, about the ship being in distress the whole time. Did it never occur to you? It did not occur to me after what the captain said. He emphasised the fact about company signals. Wait. You did not think that they were company signals? No. You did not think that they were being sent up for fun? No. What did you think? I just thought they were white rockets, that is all. When you saw her disappear, did you think that something had happened to her? No. Nothing except that she was steaming away. In view of the fact that this vessel had been sending up rockets, did you not think at the time that this ship was in distress? No. It never occurred to you? It did not occur to me, because if there had been any grounds for supposing the ship would have been in distress, the captain would have expressed it to me. Never mind about the captain. You are being asked about what you thought yourself. Do you mean to tell us that neither you nor Gibson expressed any opinion that there was something wrong with that ship? No, not wrong with the ship. You want me to believe, do you, 
that notwithstanding those rockets, neither you nor Gibson thought there was anything wrong on board that ship? Yes. You mean to tell his lordship that you did not know that the throwing up of rockets or shells throwing stars of any color or description fired one at a time at short intervals is the proper method for signaling distress at night? Yes, that is the way it is always done, as far as I know. Is not that exactly what was happening? The very thing was happening that you knew indicated distress. I knew that rockets fired at short intervals, one at a time, meant distress signals, yes. Do not speak generally. On that very night, you knew, did you not, when you saw those rockets being sent up, that they were signals of distress? No. Now, do think about what you were saying. You have just told me that what you saw from that steamer was exactly what you had been taught to understand were signals of distress. You told me so. Yes. Well, is it true? It is true that similar lights are distress signals, yes. And you had seen them from that steamer. A steamer that is in distress does not steam away from you, my lord. Judging from the appearance of the light, could she have possibly been the Titanic, in your opinion? Not by any means. Have you heard of any other steamer that was in the neighborhood at that time? No. But you knew the Titanic was there? Yes. They've called lunch. So I will see you gentlemen later. Chin up, Gibson. Chin up? Do you see what they did to Mr. Stone? They give him a right going over. I hope to God they don't go after me like that. All you have to do is say what you saw. Me and Mr. Stone were on the bridge. Didn't know what those rockets were. Then tell them that, these lawyers. Twist things. And that's what they're paid to do. Very well paid. I'm not up to it, Mr. Groves. I know I'm not up to it. It's Denny on Gibson. You saw the rockets and you went down and informed the captain. That's true, isn't it? Mr. Lee tells me you're all off the Californian. Yes, that's right. That is for my husband, sir. He went down on the Titanic. A good man and a fine officer. He remained on his ship. He gave his life to save as many as he could. He did his duty. Why didn't you do yours? Why didn't you do yours? This is not the way, Margaret. I'm sorry, sir. Come on, Margaret, I'll get someone to take you home. Just came to wish Gibson luck. How is our young friend? Nervous as hell. He's gone to the toilet for the 25th time since lunch. It'll be all right. And not let us down. You did well in there. It mustn't be easy. You'll find out soon enough. You pleased with yourself? What? Are you happy with what you had to say? If you have something to say to me, Mr. Groves, have the courage to say it plainly. You know the truth. We all do. The truth is the ship we saw was not the Titanic. She fired up eight rockets, the same as the Titanic. Coincidence. It was another ship. These were distress rockets. Why didn't you do something? The captain gives the orders pertaining to our ship, Mr. Groves. We were in the middle of an ice field. We could have gone down like the Titanic. You could have saved them. Nonsense. We were too far away. Were we? What do you mean? The scrap logbook would show exactly where we were, would show the whole world we're telling the truth. What happened to it? I don't know. I don't believe you. 
Take care what you are saying, Mr. Groves. I do care, Mr. Stone. I care a great deal. Were you an apprentice on the California? Yes. And on this night, between Sunday the 14th and Monday the 15th, what time did you go on watch? 12 o'clock midnight. Which of the officers was in charge? Mrs. Stone. Did you form any view as to how far away the ship was? From four to seven miles. Did Mr. Stone say anything to you about this ship? That she had fired five rockets. He told me he'd reported it to the captain. Did he tell you what the captain had instructed him to do? To call her upon Morse Light. What had been the result? She had not answered him, but had fired more rockets. Did you see her fire these rockets? I saw three rockets. What colour rockets were they? White ones. Did you think yourself that there was anything wrong? We had been talking about it together. I should very much like you to tell me what you'd been saying to the second officer. You remarked to me that a ship wasn't going to fire rockets at sea for nothing. A ship was not going to fire rockets at sea for nothing? Yes. I dare say you agreed with him. Yes. Do I understand from you that Mr. Stone came to the conclusion that this was a ship in distress? Uh, no, sir. Not exactly. What do you mean by not exactly? Mr. Stone said a ship does not fire rockets at night for nothing. Yes. Does not that convey to you, in his opinion, this ship was in distress? Not exactly in distress, sir. What then? That everything was not all right with her. In trouble of some sort? Yes. Did you know when the rockets were being sent up that they were being sent up as danger signals? No. What did you think the rockets were being sent up for? I thought there was some sort of private signal. Who told you they were private signals? Nobody told me. Had you ever seen private signals of this kind? No. What took place after that between you and Mr. Stone? About 20 minutes past one, Mrs. Stone remarked to me that she was slowly steaming away towards the southwest. Then Mrs. Stone remarked to me, look at her now. She looks very queer in the water. Her lights look queer. Did you look at her then through your glasses? Yes. What did you see? That she seemed to be heavily listed to the starboard. She seemed to have a list and you thought to starboard? Yes. Did you call Mr. Stone's attention to this? Yes, he, he remarked it to me at the time. He told me to look through the glasses at it. He told you to look through the glasses at that very thing? Yes. When did you first make that statement? The statement that you've just made, that you were told to look through the glasses of this list. When did you first tell anybody of that? This is the first time. You never told anybody till now in the witness box? I have spoken to Mr. Stone about it since. That is all. Have you a clear recollection of that? Yes. Just tell us. You say you spoke to Mr. Stone about it. What? Did he tell you? He said, look at her now, Gibson. Her lights look queer. I told him, she seems rather to have a big side out of the water. We were talking about it all the time, sir, until five minutes past two when she disappeared. What were the orders that Mr. Stone gave you when she disappeared? Call the captain and tell him the ship has disappeared in the southwest and she's fired altogether eight rockets. Did you report that to the captain? Yes. Where did you go? Into the chart room. Did you find the captain there? Yes. Was he awake? Yes, sir. 
Did you give him the report that you were ordered to give him? Yes. What did the captain say? He asked me where the all whites. The rockets? Yes. He asked, was there any colour in them at all? What did you tell him? I told him they were all white. Did he give any instructions? No. Will you ask him what he understood by the word disappeared? Yes, my lord. You say you were told to report that the ship had disappeared. What did you mean by disappeared? That we could not see anything more of her. A ship goes out of sight when she goes down to the bottom. What did you understand by the word disappeared? That is all I could understand about it. A ship that has been sending up rockets has disappeared. Did you understand from Mr. Stone to mean that she had gone down to the bottom? No. Well, then what did you understand? That she'd steamed away through the ice? At any time, did Mr. Stone say to you, this vessel seems to be in distress? No. He said there must be something the matter with her. Did he make any remarks to you as to the captain taking no action? Did he say anything to you at all? No. Are you sure? Yes. Did you say anything to yourself about it? I only thought the same that he thought. And what was that? That she would not fire rockets at sea for nothing and there must be something the matter with her. Then you thought it was a case of some kind of distress? Yes. I'm sorry, Captain. I did my best. Quite. It's just there were so many questions and it's hard to... I know you did your best. It's over now. Go and have your smoke. Mr. Groves. Sir? Mr. Stone informed me about what passed between you earlier. You will apologise to Mr. Stone. He is your superior officer, Mr. Groves, and you will apologise. My apologies, Mr. Stone. You may leave us now, Mr. Stone. Yes, sir. So, I understand you may have some misgivings about the evidence you'll give today. Yes, sir. That's understandable. We have all of us been under the most intolerable pressures. Even the strongest of us might begin to doubt himself. I don't doubt myself. Excellent. Then you will know that for the good of your comrades and the greater good of the service, you must do your duty today. That is all that is required, and that is the only loyalty you owe anyone. I can see that you are troubled. You have compassion, Mr. Groves, and that is a good thing in an officer. But you must not allow your emotions to sway you. Concern yourself only with the facts. The ship had a list. A list to starboard. It was the Titanic that we saw. It was not. And you must not say that it was. You know that it was. I know no such thing. That's why there was no mention of the rockets in the logbook. 
That's why the scrap log book has gone missing, so that you could put in the coordinates that suited you the next day to say that we were nowhere near the Titanic. Those are the facts. Mr. Groves, you lose the run of yourself. And once the logbook is doctored to set the position we want to be in, then we can go ahead with the denials. Deny we saw the Titanic. Deny we know what a distress rocket is. Dear God, even the rawest recruit knows a distress signal when he sees one. I didn't know about any damned rockets. Stone told you. Gibson told you. I was asleep. And while you slept, the Titanic sank. How dare you? The Titanic sank because the captain chose to ignore iceberg warnings, warnings that we gave him. He made a mistake, and he paid for that mistake with the lives of his crew and his passengers. Mistakes can have terrible consequences, Mr. Groves. And you must not make one today. We saw a ship, that's all. It was not the Titanic. They are dead. We are living. And there is nothing, nothing that you can do to help bring any of them back. Do your duty, Mr. Groves. Your duty to your captain and your crewmates. Aye, sir. Mr. Groves. Yes? The name's Lee. I wanted to apologize. Sorry about what happened. The lady who slapped you. Margaret's not herself. Hasn't been herself since. I understand. And I want you to know that I, that we in the Titanic don't harbor any grudge. I know you would have helped us if you could. I mean, if you'd known it was us, you would have come straight for us. Ice or no ice. Just like if our situations were reversed, we'd have come for you. Yes. We have an understanding. A code of honor to look out for each other. It's part of who we are. Charles Victor Groves. Charles Victor Groves to give evidence. Your name is Charles Groves. About 11.10, ship's time, I made out a steamer coming up on our starboard. Did you report that to the captain? Yes, I went to the lower bridge and I told him. Did you say what kind of steamer you thought she was? I said she is evidently a passenger steamer. Did you say why you thought she was a passenger steamer? Uh, yes, I told him I could see her deck lights and that made me pass the remark that she is evidently a passenger steamer. 
How many deck lights had she? Had she much light? Yes, a lot of light. Uh, there was absolutely no doubt in her being a passenger steamer, at least in my mind. You could see two mast headlights? I did see two mast headlights. Did you have any more conversation with the captain about this steamer? He came up on the bridge and said, that does not look like a passenger steamer. I said, it is, sir. Uh, she put her lights out a few minutes ago. Was anything said at the time about the Titanic? He said, the only passenger steamer near us is the Titanic. Did the steamer continue on her course after that? No, uh, she stopped. That was about 11.40, her lights appeared to go out. At 11.40, the engines were stopped on the Titanic? Yes, my lord. I stayed on the bridge until sometime between 12.10 and 12.15. And you were then relieved by Mr. Stone? I was. You were the officer of the watch from 8 p.m. to midnight. Would you then be keeping the scrap log? I was keeping the scrap log. Is the scrap log here? No. It is not kept. Is it destroyed from time to time? There is one log always kept, of course, but the scrap log is destroyed from time to time. It is copied from the scrap log into the printed log. Into this fair copy, this book which I have here? Yes. Where is the scrap log book? I expect it was thrown away. Where was it thrown away to? I expect it went over the side. Did you throw it over the side? I did not. Who did? I do not know. You would know that this book was the book which contained the real record for the 14th of April. Of course I knew that. And by that time, of course, you knew, and others on your ship knew, that a very serious inquiry was being made as to the position of your ship and what she was doing on the 14th of April? Certainly. And by that time, you knew that there was some discussion as to whether that ship was the Titanic or some other ship? That was a discussion amongst ourselves. You must have seen the scrap log book the next day when you came on duty. Do you know whether it contains any record of these rockets being seen? I saw none myself. If you had been keeping the scrap log book and had seen a succession of white rockets fired from this vessel, would you have made a record in your scrap log? Most decidedly, that is what the scrap log book is for. So I should have thought. Then it would have been the business of the man who had charge of this book to record those facts. I think so, my lord. Who was he? Mr. Stone was on watch. Therefore, if Mr. Stone did what you think was his duty, then this scrap log book, which was thrown away or in all events cannot be found, would contain a record of those rockets having been seen. Yes, my lord. I must ask you something more. If the Titanic was in latitude 41 degrees 33, and your vessel was, as stated in the log, in latitude 42 degrees 5, the Titanic would be some 33 miles to the southward of the position where you were lying stopped. Yes, about 30 miles. And if the Titanic was 30 miles to the southward, I don't suppose you could see any navigation lights at that distance? No, none whatsoever. If this vessel which you did see was only some four or five miles to the southward of you, do you think she could have been the Titanic? That is a question I want this witness to answer. Speaking as an experienced seaman and knowing what you know now, do you think that the steamer that was throwing up rockets and that you say was a passenger steamer was the Titanic? Most decidedly, I do.
So, that is British justice, is it? I demand to appeal. I'm afraid you don't have the right to appeal. You're merely a witness. You'd have to get the inquiry reopened, and I don't think anyone wants to do that, do you? So they can blacken my name forever. These men who have never even been to sea, they can tarnish my reputation. We haven't heard the findings of the inquiry yet. Perhaps you fret prematurely, Captain. Every officer and every man of my crew is an Englishman. And no Englishman will stand by and see anyone or anything in distress without trying to lend assistance. These circumstances convince me that the ship seen by the Californian was the Titanic. When she first saw the rockets, the Californian could have pushed through the ice into open water without serious risk, and so have come to the assistance of the Titanic. Had she done so, she might have saved many if not all of the 1,500 lives that were lost. Captain Lord was blamed for failing to help the Titanic and was sacked as captain. However, he managed to obtain a new command straight away and retired comfortably in 1927. Lord publicly blamed Stone for failing to tell him that the rockets he had seen were distress rockets. Herbert Stone was never seen fit to have command of a ship. Tormented by guilt, he left the merchant navy and ended his days as a dock laborer. He died in poverty. James Gibson had a successful career spanning 46 years and made second mate. Charles Groves eventually was promoted to captain and served with distinction in both world wars. A century later, it has never been definitively proven whether the ship sighted from the deck of the Californian was the Titanic, but many experts believe that it was. If it was the Titanic, the reason why the Californian did not go to her remains a mystery to this day. Over 1,500 people lost their lives that night.